Hi everybody, we're just getting a few more uh, logging in here, connecting as well, so everyone should be with us very shortly, I think. Um, hello to everyone, Happy New Year. Hopefully uh, everyone's, well, hopefully no one's too chilly at the moment, as um, we've got a light dusting of snow in Sheffield here, a couple of centimetres or so um, over in Bakewell, but uh, yeah, lots of Manchester way, so Everyone coming over to the brew from Manchester was uh, pretty stuck, so they all went back home. So <laughs> it's been, um, yeah, in, very chilly, but um, nice start to the year. Lots of sunshine too as well. Um, we are joined tonight. Reese from Don Zoko is coming to join as he was joining just a second ago connecting. And so I think we'll have him in just a moment. So uh, big thanks to Reese for joining us. And then, of course, joined by Charlotte Walker and Russell from the Tap Room as well to um, talk to us, hang out with us and chat as well. And uh, again, thank you, everyone, for tuning in, for joining us as we start 2023. We kick off with our latest box and... Um, yeah, as I say, a few more joined, but Happy New Year to everyone who's just logging in now as well. It's, uh, again, very nice to see everyone. Um, as always, we don't want anyone going thirsty, so we'll crack in chatting about a beer and then work our way through talking about the beers. Um, we'll have Reese Ekansi's just logging on there now as well. So Reese is uh, taking the time to join us. He'll be chatting through a little bit about Don Zoka with our collab later on. Um, and yeah, take it nice and easy. As always, we'll keep the chat open. Please drop any messages in there. Tell us, you know, what beers you were enjoying over Christmas, over New Year. Um, what beers you're enjoying now? What was your favorite beers from the box this month? And looking forward to hearing everything. So um, yeah, we'll get started. Like I say, we're going to kick off with Mikan Shimoda. So of course, hopefully... You may have seen the uh, message that's gone out, the email. Unfortunately, with the Mikan Shimoda, we did have uh, a slight problem with the best befores that you may have seen on there. So completely a mistake on our part with some of the um, pallets that had been going around. Basically, we had sent them out, quickly realized about the best before. And so hopefully you've seen the email. We will be sending out two free ones next month to make up for it. But you can give it a crack. In the meantime, we cracked a few at the brewery just to make sure, of course. We test them regularly as well. And they are in fine condition too. So hopefully it wasn't too, um, it didn't cause any problems for anyone. But just to give you a heads up, if you haven't seen the email, we will be sending out those next time as well. So um, that is the Mikan Shimoda for when you're trying it properly, just to tell you a little more about it. This was our collaboration with Tonkotsu. There's this fantastic ramen restaurant, have lots of outlets, mainly across London. Uh, and the idea behind the beer was to put something together that worked really nicely um, with ramen, basically, that they could have in their restaurants. You see, if you've tried this beer before, you would have noticed it was a labeled can. We've since moved to printed, um, which for us means we're now getting through much more of it. It's one that's really popular um, and has proven so since. So um, Grumpy's there, they're saying they were fine and we did try them ourselves. We've got some right here. Um, it certainly drank very nicely. It still gives you the, the big flavor we expect, but of course it's not up to the standards we'd want. So we did want to let everyone know in advance with sending out the email and just warning you all about it too. So. Keep an eye out for those two free ones coming up next month too. Um, but for those who've enjoyed it and tried it, the aim, like I say, was to have a beer that had perfectly worked with the different ramens they're offering in there. Um, and we wanted that nice kind of like satsuma, that light orangey citrus kick to it as well. It's got a beautiful light haze. And as with all our beers like this, just that really nice white head on the top there, making it very attractive looking too almost see-through but just that nice light haze that I mentioned giving it some a real welcoming for me I like that color I like that look on a beer style as well there um, and a nice light easy drinker as well to start out with so a bit of a fun one collabing like that we like doing you know we've done fourth rifles Wednesday pale ale we like working with different companies with different people of course with uh, Sheffield Wednesday football club as well and all sorts and almost brings us on to our next beer. Um, but we do all these pairings. We like to work with people we enjoy if they're doing food offerings or anything else. It just allows us, even outside of collabing with different breweries, just a different voice and, and different thoughts in there as well. Um, Matt is uh, saying sticky toffee pudding pardas is beautiful. Good. I'm glad you're enjoying it so far. 
We'll work our way up to that as we talk through the beers this evening. Uh, again, please keep dropping those comments in. Tell us um, what's going on, what's happening. Um, and talking of, we've got some events already starting to kick off for the year. Uh, Charlotte, I believe you've got uh, some to let us know about what's happening. Yeah, yeah. So um, next next Thursday, a week today, we're at Beeropolis in Burton on Trent for a tap takeover. Um, I believe there's going to be 16 lines uh, of Thornbridge, which is quite quite big. <laughs> um, and then end of the month, we're at Harvey Leonard's in Glossop, um, also for a tap takeover. And I think that's a ticketed event. Um, and I think that's £25 per person, which includes six beers and food. Um, yeah. Um, 2nd of February, we're at the Pitch House, um, another tap takeover that is, and that's in Sutton. Um, and then just after that, 3rd and 4th of February, we're um, at the camera event at the Winding Wheel in Chesterfield. Um, I think that's a three day event. Um, yeah. Yeah. So 2nd, 3rd, and 4th of February. And then um, 8th of February, we're at the Hallamshire in Sheffield. Um, that's a tutored tasting. Um, that's, um, again, another ticketed event. It's only six pounds per person, um, which includes six um, tasters of um, you know, different beers. And there is a social post going out tomorrow for that, so, um, which will have the link to take you to the ticket site. Well, so, yeah, that's everything kind of coming up. Cheers, Charlotte. Yeah, we are certainly trying to kick off the year with a bang, getting out and about everywhere. Um, if you are anywhere near Glossop, Harvey Leonard's, I've done a couple of events there in the past, is a great location. They really go all out as well. Uh, and it will be myself doing the Hallamshire too. So um, if we want to do similar to this in person, come down, chat about beers, hang out. Uh, make sure to come on down to the Hallamshire next month as well. As, as Charlotte mentioned, the, there'll be stuff going out on the social posts, but you're going to find us at festivals, events, all over the place. The team after, um, you know, we've had lots of nice beers and food over New Year. We're all reset. We're ready to be out chatting to people and, and getting underway again, really, too. So, um, yeah, please do come find us at anything. Let us know as well in the chat, anywhere else, if you're going out to any of them, if we can expect you there. Um, come up and say hello to the team as well. Let them know you're a beer club member if you pop by and I'm sure they'll always be very friendly, very excited and very happy to see everyone too. So um, yeah, thank you, Charlotte. And so then from there, I mentioned about doing these kind of collabs, these different beers, ones that we look at and, and again, get a bit of a different view of things and, and work on, you know, in this case, celebrating uh, the world's first football club. So the next beer we're talking and looking at is the 1857. So we've had a lot of links with Sheffield FC. Um, it was the original football club, the first one ever in the world. And since then, they've had a very rich history. You know, they're, um, they've been all over the world. They've played some fantastic teams, had visitors from all over and really left their mark on global football at this point. So um, we want to team up with them. We have the Coach and Horses pub is right there on the doorstep of the ground. So you can go down, have a pint and then go and see them play as well. Um, and we've got a lot of personal links. We know lots of people there. We've worked with them over the years, too. So it's always been a fantastic pairing uh, to work alongside with them. For any of you amateur footballers out there as well, if you go on our socials at the moment or Kit Locker, there is a fantastic competition going to win Thornbridge branded uh, kit actually for amateur teams there too. So head on over to our social media for that. There's some designs for Jaipur and Green Mountain already that look great. Um, and yeah, we, uh, we have a big love of football here. So it's nice to be able to, to do things like that. But with the 1857, this is a Nelson Sovan hop. So it's light, it's fresh. This one's got right through, you can see that fantastic clarity. It still has the great white head in there, but you pop your nose in, you should start to get this kind of, there's a little sweetness almost followed by this gooseberry, like with a little kind of grape. And it is such a fantastically drinkable beer. This is a real enjoyable, we talk about sit down, have this watching the football, hanging out. It's a perfect beer to do it with. It's just very easy drinking and light and fresh. So we think a perfect beer to accompany 
I say watching some football too. Uh, Ian just popping in the chat there. Should be at the Chestnut on the 27th across the road. Oh, fantastic. Well, please make sure to pop in, Ian. Um, and like I say, the team will be down there talking through beers, working their way through everything, chatting to folks. So pop in and they'll certainly be looking after everyone in there too. So it um, should be a great evening. And it's just nice to be back out and out, out and about again, even in this chilly weather. So that was 1857. Let me know how you're enjoying it. If you've had a chance to try it yet, if you've watched any of the football yet while enjoying it too, certainly recommend it. Crack it open on a Saturday and um, yeah, perfect beer to, to go from there. So as we talk about perfect, easy drinking, well, not, you know, fantastically flavored beers, we'll talk with Reese about our collaboration here with Don Zoko. Um, Reese, thank you for joining us this evening. Thanks for having us. Yeah, no, it's really appreciate it. Um, so everyone, we've got Reese, you know, founder, owner, the man behind Don Zoko, um, taking the time to join us. And we've worked on this great collaboration together. Uh, I know the guys at the brewery love the beers that you make. Um, actually, one thing I always remember, it was a while ago now, but you wrote a fantastic column, I suppose, for Pellicle about banked beer. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so really cool. I enjoyed that a lot. Cheers. Thanks a lot. Yes. Yeah, so if anyone gets the chance, you know, Google uh, Don Zoko Pellicle Banked Beer and it's a fantastic um, article all about bank beer in the Northeast. And uh, I learned a lot from reading it. There was a lot of passion in there as well. So, yeah, really cool. I enjoyed that. Um, but now on to, I suppose, more recent beers for us, at least. The, uh, we've brewed up our collaboration brew um would you mind talking us through it tell us a bit about it how you know it came about from your side and working with the team at the brewery on it as well yeah so <clears throat> at Donzoka we make a lot of like lagers because <laughs> i used to live in germany so i do i brew a lot of german style beers and um one i lived in munich and like in the traditional beer of munich going back hundreds of years is dark lagers like like um uh, dunkels so dunkel <laughs> just means dark in german so these like traditional brown lagers were like the mainstay of lager for hundreds of years until Pilsner was invented in Czech Republic. And then the Germans invented the Hellas style beer, which is what we know now as uh, like most like Augustina. But before that, every, every beer was like lager was this color. <clears throat> and I really like living, uh, living there and drinking those beers. And I know uh, Rob and Dom really like uh, Dunkels as well. And they're a style of lager you don't really get in the UK because the kind of less easy drinking than the, than, than the Pilsner, but like kind of hearty, kind of comforting, a bit like a German version of like a best bitter, where like you want to sit down and drink a half liter of it. And it's kind of, for this sort of weather where it's kind of cold outside, it's really easy drinking, but it's malty, it's kind of sweet, it smells like, like, <laughs> for lack of a better word, like a, like a brown beer, but um <laughs> The yeah, lager yeah. yeast gives it a real crispy, a real yeah. like um, like breadiness uh, from the mold, and it, uh, it just finishes um, with it being with it being a lager, not like an like, like a brown ale. It doesn't it doesn't put you put you out. Uh, and it's a real nice drinking beer. Like if you got an afternoon in a pub and a few pints of Dunkel, it's it's a good afternoon, especially with like snowing outside, which it currently is in Edinburgh. Uh, I'm, I'm going to enjoy this, I think. Uh, Sorry. Sorry to hear about the snow. <laughs> yeah. So Rob said, what malt did we use to get the darkness? So typically in a, um, a dunkel, it's all Munich malt, which is like a, a an amber kind of like kind of a brown, light brown colored malt. We also use a little bit of chocolate malt um, and a, yeah, a tiny bit of chocolate malt. Um yeah, basically it was Munich and chocolate. So kind of majority like light brown grains with a tiny bit of like kind of dark brown just to get the, the color. But I think it, it tastes like a lot lighter than it looks. It looks like you're drinking like a stout, but like it just goes down so easy because it's with it being a lager. Um, yeah, I really like it. It's a real, real nice example as well. Like it's super clean, super crisp, but has that kind of malty flavor. Yeah, uh, to keep you going. It's not the most like exciting beer in the world to blow your mind, but like 
yeah for this sort of weather in this time of year it's i think it's perfect yeah absolutely agreed definitely it's it's been going down well yeah, already the, um, uh, what was that sorry the, uh, Haddon is that the area of munich used to live in sorry i break up there yeah the name uh Haddon is the area of munich i used to live in um it's quite nice there so i'll use that name no, perfect. Um, no, it's, yeah, like I say, and actually, so something that we also then added in was the um, taking that inspiration from your name to put into the artwork there as well. So we've had a new um, design lead, a creative lead join the brewery, uh, and she's been putting together some fantastic label designs for us at the moment. So um, you'd come up with a name for it and, and the area, like you say. And so we took a little bit of that kind of classic Bavaria, classic Munich and popped it on the label. So you'll see that difference in our collabs and some of our other beers as we move forwards now too. So um, yeah, it worked perfectly. We thought we liked the name for it. It suits the beer. And as you say, uh, you know, not one that like, it's not got the big American and Australian hops or anything, but just a perfectly done sort of classic style. So yeah, very enjoyable. Yeah, it's a good, it's a good drinking beer. I yeah, yeah, <laughs> it is that. After you open it. Uh, yeah, definitely. I know the brewers that. were keen to to do something with yourself because of that knowledge and experience of lagers as well that you have. Mm. Yeah, and I, I've always liked the Farmbridge lagers as well. Like I really like Lucas. I think it's so good. And um, no one, no one makes Dunkles. Um, no, I think they're delicious. Like, but no one knows doesn't because no one knows what they are. But I think the class. Uh, someone said, "What food would I recommend with it?" Like, hmm. Like, honestly, like a Sunday roast would be class with this because, like, it's kind of yeah, it is got those complementary flavors, like that roasty kind of maltiness and the kind of sweetness. But also, it's so crisp that like it's going to cut through all the fat if there's any meat or like roasted vegetables. It's going to cut through that. Alternatively, like um, something completely different, like I think if I'd like bacon and pancakes and like a glass of this, I think it'd be great because yeah, it's going to cut through the sweetness, it's going to cut through everything, but it's still going to be kind of complementary with kind of sweet flavors as well. Like yeah. if anything, where like sometimes you have a dessert and an imperial stout and it's too rich because mm -hmm. you've got the sweetness and then you got the sweetness, this has like if you're balancing sweetness with just crispness as well. So anything which is quite sweet or quite like intense, you want to cut through, uh, this would be good, I think. Yeah, good breakfast beer, basically, with your pancakes, your bacon, get you started out. Yeah, also, obviously, if a pork knuckle would, would be good, a Schweinsaxe would be nice. Ooh, yeah. Um, the, um, all all Bavarian foods would just roast pork and gravy, basically <laughs> the Sunday roast, but without the vegetables. Like, there's just no vegetables in Germany, it's weird. Like it's in Bavaria, there's like cabbage and then that's it. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, perfect beer for it. Pork or pretzels and that, that's all you're getting. So uh, yeah, this this would go well with any sort of like fatty meat or like something that needs a bit of uh, balancing out. Right. And so Reese, while, while we've got you um, on the line as well, would you mind telling us uh, you know, about the brewery, about the history, how you've come about, you know, what you've got coming up, that sort of thing. It's always great to hear, you know, from yourself particularly about how everything's been happening. Yeah, so the brewery started pretty much five years ago. Um, it was just me. Um, and I was living over in Germany and then uh, my university actually gave me some money to start the business, um, like a grant. So I did that um, and been, I was brewing in the northeast in Hartlepool for four years. And then, um, yeah, last year I moved up to Edinburgh and now we live in Edinburgh, brew there. Now we've got one of the employee now, so it's not just me. And we're still making like lagers, um, some hobby pails, but mainly like we're known for our lagers. So we just stick with that. So like our like two best sellers are Northern Hellas, which is an unfiltered lager, and Big Form, which is called like a rustic lager, which is quite hoppy and has some some lots of ingredients from local farms in mm -hmm. um yeah and we're kind of going to doing these like kind of quirky uh delicious versions of classic lagers um and that, that's what i enjoy making it's kind of like a niche we had when we started and then we've just kind of lent into that and now kind of people think of kind of lagers we like yeah we, we try and be the people 
they want the lagers from, if you know what I mean. Like other people are better at hoppy beers, <laughs> other people are better at stouts. We, we try to be the the lager people, um, and yeah, I mean lager's great. It's, it's delicious. So uh, yeah. yeah, and things things coming up. Um, we just put a wheat beer that's pre been pretty popular, been pretty tasty for the vice. Um, we are making a few more hoppy beers, kind of stealing recipes and techniques from other breweries that we go when we collaborate. Great. So just when I was at Thornbridge, I was just copying the dry pearl recipe. <laughs> I'm, I'm joking, but um, yeah, uh, just just um, just just brew more beer, basically, more different lagers, um, and yeah, hoping to maybe open a pub this year. That's the goal for nice. Don Zoko for this year is to open open a venue so we can serve our own beers the way we want it, and maybe do some banked beers as well with the big foamy heads. Yes, they can read part of that. Up. Yeah, that'd be quite fun. Fantastic. Is that in Edinburgh? You're opening the pub? Um, we'll see. We're looking at either Edinburgh or the North East. We've got a couple of places in mind. Mm. But, uh, with the sort of beer we make, which is kind of like this sort of beer, like just drinking beer, where it's like, mm -hmm. it's not too intense, it's delicious, and have a few, and it's more about like, yeah, you could study the beer if you want to, but at yeah. the end of the day, you're talking with your friends, you're having a nice time. Mm -hmm. That's what that's what I kind of like about beer, rather than kind of the dissecting of it all, although it is great, is like, have a few pints with your friends. If the beer is really good, then it's a good, it's a great, but it's a great starting point for that. If you know what I mean. Um, yeah. So that we 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 got the sort of beers which would a pub would be great. You know what I mean? It would be great at a pub. So yeah. that's that's the goal for this year. For sure. Definitely. Oh, good. We'll keep an eye out for it. Like you say, it sounds already. You've got the bones of it, so it's going to be pretty exciting. I'm sure. Cool. Um, and then, so are you at any events or festivals? I know Charlotte, of course, was talking where we're at. Can we, you know, if anyone's around, are they going to find you anywhere? Yeah, um, and it, that's, a better, that's a better question for the other guy in Don Zoko. But <laughs> I know for, um, in two weeks' time, the first mm -hmm. weekend of February, we're in um, uh, Kendall, we're at Gliski Festival, which I was with Felbury. Um, that looks like a really good festival. It's the first year they've done it. Mm -hmm. And the lineup of breweries is great. There's some, uh, looks like there's good food. And yeah, you're in the Lake District. So like, yeah. it can't be that bad, right? Like, <laughs> there's some good pubs. Go for a walk, have a couple of pints. It sounds perfect. Yeah. Um, and other than that, I think we got a few lined up in summer, but mm -hmm. I'd have to double check the diary because <laughs> festival time is so exhausting that I just push it to the, to the back of front of my mind and then forget about it until it's a week before and then I panic. And then I go to the festival, it's fine. But right now it's relaxing January time. Nice. So I've not got my festival hat on yet. I've got my pints hat on. <laughs> That's a cool hat. I like that. Thank you. Available from the Dunzocka web shop. Good plug. <laughs> nice. <laughs> And so that's obviously you've got the full web shop on there. So the hats, every the beers, everything can just find online from you there. Yeah, yeah. We do mixed packs. We do, yeah, like uh, these these delicious double branded hats, nice. um, in two colors, uh, and we got yeah beers and whatever. It's a uh, yeah, the web shop's nice. Perfect. Um, and you've got a question there. Are you selling beer boxes on Bruiser? That's really weird because I was just emailing the guy from Bruiser before mm -hmm. I opened the tab. And yes, we're going to be on there. I don't know when, but we will be on there at some point. Um, maybe next month. Uh, yeah, but the plan is to get on that as well. As I've, it's, it, is, it is cheaper to go directly to our website, but like, I don't know, for people, Bruiser for people is, is great for them to, if you've got it rolling, it's great to go directly there. So yeah, that's the plan. It's to be on Bruiser next week, next, next month as well. Really? All right. So yeah, online for Bruiser and then look out for you. Will your Vice beer be in small pack? Will it be on the online shop as well? Yeah, we just launched that actually. So I'm filming a video about that tomorrow. Nice. Um, that should be up soon. Um, and yeah, what else have we got in tank? We've got um, a Goza coming out, like a really pineapple, easy drinking Goza. Mm -hmm. that no, no one makes those beers anymore. <laughs> like pineapple <laughs> sour beers. Um, and We've got a small palace called Super King. Um, we've got a new export lager called Champion. Nice. And yeah, other stuff. We did, just did a collaboration with Viper and True. Okay. Uh, the book we Hellas. us. Um, yeah, all sorts going on. Yeah, busy. Nice. Yes. <laughs> I find you everywhere. So fantastic. No, it's been it's been great. I know again the brewers were 
really excited to team up with someone who knows lager, loves lager, and brews great lager as well. So it was fun to do the whole collab together. Yeah, it was real fun. Yeah. Learned, learned a lot as well, which is always nice. Yeah, we'll be keeping an eye out for them recipes, like you say, just just in case you were copying them down. <laughs> yeah, like a dry pur, but with spelled with a Y or something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it is. We'll, we'll know. We'll know, Reese. We'll know. <laughs> Well, but yeah, well, thank you. Um, was there anything else you wanted to, um, you know, mention while we've got you on? Or, I mean, thank you for talking us through the history and the beers and everything. It's always interesting. Yeah. Was there any other questions for me before I head off or everyone, everyone happy? I think that was it so far. But again, I mean, I know you're on, of course, all the socials. So if anyone does need, suddenly come up with any questions, you know, go away at the at the social media there you can you know ask away and i'm sure you'll get some answers too um yeah. and again definitely check out that article on banked beer on pellicle as well because it is very interesting very cool so yeah certainly worth reading i'll put a link in the chat uh ah, yeah that'd be good yeah, yeah. here from like uh, where i'm from in the northeast um it's like a like old tradition that's mm -hmm. kind of dying out yeah, uh, so I wrote an article about it. But, uh, ah. Yeah, here it is. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, so please, yeah, if you get the chance to check that out, please give it a read as well, guys. You don't want to read that at any point. When you're on the toilet, it's a good toilet. Thanks, everyone. Cheers, Tris. Cool. Thank you. All right. So that was Reese. He, he did have to dash off, but um, yeah. He, Thank you. Uh, it's gone now, but <laughs> thanks to Reese for the time. It was great to have him on there and just follow him on his socials and everything else as well. And definitely do read the article he's posted in the chat there as well. Um, and so as we get into our next beers, we've got Taproom Manager Russell here today. He's been working on uh, the different beers, tasting them all, seeing them being brewed in the whole kit behind him. Um, so please take it away. Tell us all about Crotada, Russell. Sure, thanks, James. Yeah, you made it sound like I've got a really terrible job there, just tasting beers daily, watching them being brewed daily as well. I'm not even going to get involved in the brewing. So, um, it's hard. Really, it's hard. It is a hard life, yeah. So, um, yes, we've had a fantastic Christmas at the tap room, really, really busy. Um, we managed to get a bit of time off over Christmas as well. So, uh, we were closed on Boxing Day and New Year's Day, which was, uh, it was great for the staff just to relax with families and whatever and you know soon enough we're back into uh to january now and, and the bitter cold so we're slightly quieter than we like to be but it does mean that we can kind of get the tap room back in order and, and spick and span so that's what we're doing at the moment um and just going back to uh to reese and, and and that beer as well you know i think it's i think we should congratulate everyone that's involved because it's a great beer um i was lucky enough to visit uh cologne and dusseldorf uh, mid last year and it just reminds me and takes me back to that every beer house up and down kind of um, the main strips and in the city centres that's kind of that was their house lager I suppose those dark lagers so it just reminds me of that so I'll be definitely buying a bit more of that um, anyway uh, on to Cortado which is our next beer this is our um, our flat white pale at 4.9% so we've done this in the past at Thormish before but this is the first time that we've we've put it in a can or a bottle um, so yeah, so I'll just get it poured. So um, it's, it's, I think it, it was classed as a, a juxtaposition in the, uh, in the notes, which is just basically means two things that are, are very different come together. Um, so yeah, thanks James. Yeah, so, um, so that's the beer itself. Um, so yeah, coffee and beer collide. You wouldn't really think to probably put them together, especially a, a lighter beer, but this goes really, really well with a, with a Chinook cop. Um, it's uh, Arabica coffee that we use for this, which is um, slightly sweeter, um, a lot smoother than uh, like a, a Robusta bean, for example. And it works really, really well with kind of like chocolate and, and sugar notes. Um, and it's not too contrasting as well with, uh, like I said, that, that Chinook hot. Anyone that knows me, love a Chinook hot. I'm mad about Jaipur, so, so this works really, really well for me. So yeah, so on the nose, you can just you just get that that back tone of coffee. It's like a smooth, sweet coffee. It's not like you walk into a Costa coffee. You know, it's just it's just there. And then just really smooth with it as well. Really, really nice. Um, 
yeah, it's, it, it's just a great beer. Um, I, I, we had it in, in cask last year. So to have it in, in can now, it's just brilliant. It's, um, it's, uh, it's going really well. It's available in the shop now uh, at the tap room. So come and get it while stocks last. And I believe at some point this weekend, it'll, uh, it'll go on to the bar as well. We've, um, we've got some other cask in front of it, um, but it should be on Saturday or Sunday. And it will be really, really popular. So it will uh, it'll go soon. But in terms of food pairings as well, um, I think this is kind of, um, if you're having it in the evening, it's great with the dessert. So, you know, that kind of tiramisu vibe, that creamy coffee kind of dessert would go really, really well with it. However, with it being quite, you know, pale ale, um, quite drinkable as well at 4.9%. I think if you're having a, a bit of a session, then um, then a brunch and an all day breakfast, that would kind of go well with it, that kind of coffee vibe or that alternative to a to a strong coffee uh, for brunch would work really, really well with it. And yeah, Cortado as well, you know, it's um, that Spanish name for that certain type of coffee it doesn't exist in Italy. I think the Italians get really offended when, I, when you start asking them for a cortado if you if we drink one but yeah just equal equal amounts of um milk and coffee and steamed milk at that not not frothed milk yeah i've got an italian friend who forever teaches me about coffee and tells me that i'm drinking the wrong thing and i only drink black coffee but apparently i, I drink it too strong i drink it too late in the day but um but anyway yeah that's the bit great bit i'm surprised every time i go to italy it's lots of small espressos all through the day non-stop almost so uh, i'm surprised exactly. there's such a thing yeah. is too late but, I, I, yeah, I, I agree, James. I lengthen my coffee with water. Apparently, that's really, really bad. That's terrible, apparently. And it's, uh, yeah, it's sacrilege. But um, I'll keep drinking my coffee my way. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, as, if I come back from Italy, I'm, it's always a come down from having had too many and getting excited Absolutely. by the little yeah. espressos. Um, but thank you for talking us through that one. It, yeah, fantastic. And in fact, Matt's just mentioned there, he visited the tap room a couple of times over Christmas and enjoyed it um had great fun and loved the pizza as well so oh, thanks, thanks matt you've got to make make yourself aware to us when you're next in you know you might even get bought, bought a pint so um yeah whenever you're next in let us know but thanks very much for supporting us there you go reason enough right there make sure you pop in and say hello to russell while you're down there um and come out and join us even a day like today like i say a little bit of snow out in bakewell but it's just stunning the sunshine it is gorgeous still so yeah certainly pop out maybe don't sit outside but have a nice walk down <laughs> and sit inside um you got uh, grumpies there uh banging beer and sam enjoying it as well yeah certainly something just a little bit different we've done fika in the past that big um you know cold brew coffee stout so we're well experienced with it but yeah, that great description there from Russell talking through it, and it is a, a lovely beer as well. So um, that then takes us on to, we'll talk about Quiet Storm Amarillo. So this one continues our Quiet Storm beer series. We love brewing these single hopped beers um, just because, again, every time we talk about them, people have really enjoyed them. We're going to keep them going once a month right through 2023. Um, we'll be finding lots of colors, of course, to try and make sure we're keeping them all different each time. And we're going to be just experimenting with these hops. We'll continue trying American ones, German ones. We've got some really great British hops lined up this year as well, working with local hop, well, English hop producers who can make some fantastic stuff. And uh, we want to keep on trying to kind of push the boundaries, showcase what we can and um, really give people different flavors and tastes as well when it comes to these beers within the Quiet Storm series. So Amarillo is a hop we've used huge amounts of times, probably hundreds over the years in different IPAs, different pale ales, all sorts of beers. We had it for a little while, even in a sour when we first did Tart. It was one of the hops we tried it out within there. Um, and so it has been a very popular hop for us. And hopefully you see why when you tuck into it here as well. I was doing a little tasting with this one earlier this afternoon um, and the guys there were pulling blood orange out when they were drinking this and enjoying it. And it really is that kind of like nice citrus notes that you get in there. You won't get too much towards that big tropical. It's just really light, it's fresh. And actually I've not, I could not think of a time I'd had a single hop Amarillo before. So it was really fun to try it out. Again, we have it in so many other beers that it's nice to have it by itself. And you think, oh, OK, that's that flavor in, you know, these IPAs I've had, I've had Amarillo. And so I'm able to pull it from that. And then you think more and more about it, hopefully. And 
and hopefully coming away learning a bit about the beers. As I say, these quiet storms will continue coming out right through as well. Um, and for those of you, Russell mentioned as well about the beers being in the shop and online. So if you keep an eye on our online through January, you'll be able to pick up some good deals and discounts in there as well. We know coming into the month, it's always a tough one. It feels like we're in like what week 19 or whatever of January so far. We know it's tough. So we will be putting some offers and deals out on, on different beers too. So if you're enjoying the beer club ones and others, you want to stock up on anything, make sure to check out what we've got coming in as well. So um, Sam, such a great series. Ah, yeah, the full melon was a really fun one. Again, brewing that and the Halatau, ones that maybe you don't see quite as often, especially in the days of these big American hops. It's, it is really nice to brew them. Um, and like you say, some nice surprises where you just wouldn't have expected it or you wouldn't think of that hop first if you're thinking of big flavorful ones as well. Um, so hopefully you'll keep enjoying those two. We'll have some very fun ones coming up in, in next month's box as well. Um, and so, yeah, but that one takes us up to, we'll bump up a little extra here now as we get into Pardus to finish out. And one I know was suggested by quite a number of you. I was quite excited to be able to get this one through. Um, Russell's a big fan of this series, so I'm going to let him uh, talk all about this one as well here. Yeah, thanks, James. Um, yeah, I feel like I've taken the, the, the best two beers um, uh, in, in this call, so I do apologise, but but these are great. Um, yeah, so I call it the, the Pudding Pardis range. So this one, Sticky Toffee Pudding, I know it's been requested by loads and loads of people. We've had loads of people asking about it in the tap room. Um, 8% Imperial Stout, so just a great, really, really good stout recipe um, uh, with, um, with a kind of a roasted malt. Um, in there as well and we tend to say that we should serve this one between kind of 10 10 15 degrees so it doesn't even really need putting in the fridge to be honest it can stay on a windowsill at the moment um, in your kitchen or something like that um, and yeah so let's let's get into that so yeah sweetness and then, and then kind of bitterness as well and that kind of bitterness stays with you but you know to start with it is it's really really it's kind of chocolatey. There's a thin, a really thin caramel in there as well. Um, and I think that really comes through as well. There's only a small amount of it, but, um, but I think it comes through. And it's just a really, really good after dinner treat, I think. I think that's a kind of end of night whiskey alternative. Um, and I think it's really good. Um, food pairing on that one. I like to bring a prop or the actual thing with me on these calls. So I've got leftover panettone from christmas okay and a lot of people do complain this is this is dry so this is great for either kind of you know dipping in to your stout or uh, just having alongside with it if you you know you're a bit more reserved or um yeah so so a bit of a bit of christmas panettone a uh, a sticky toffee pardus that is my end of night that's my dessert that's a great a great little pud to end a great meal really chuffed with it alternatively just take a little bit of it so 75 to 100 ml of it and just pour it over vanilla ice cream and that kind of cream will cut through kind of the sweetness of um of your pardis so um it's uh, that taken an affogato you can't really do it with the cortado with it being a, a light beer but with any sort of one of our dark beers that are quite sweet i think they go over ice cream quite well and i've mentioned that in the past so yeah um it's great it's fantastic is it my favorite one i think rocky road still stands out for me unfortunately i think that's that's still taking its crown but it's definitely a close second. Yeah, I'm enjoying the props, Russell. It's good. It's good forethought. Nice to, to talk about the food pairings too. They'll, uh, they'll, they'll be here every month. Don't worry. <laughs> no, good. I like that. It's nice. I mean, it's something, you know, of course, down in the tap room, we've got all the different pizzas and beer and it's something we always focus on. It's why we have the beer and food pairing. We've done a recipe book in the past with different beer and food. So um, yeah, it's, it's always something nice. So yeah, it's always good to see the, uh, what you're doing, panettone. I've got some kicking around downstairs, so I'll be trying that afterwards. Good suggestion. Yeah, yeah. We, we've all got it at this time of year, <laughs> so, uh, so it's, a good, it's a good way to get rid of it. And mine, incidentally, I got mine after Christmas. It was a Marks yeah, no. special, it was a reduced one. So, uh, <laughs> you know, get it while you can. Yeah, fair, good thinking. And Matt there, carrot cake part us next. Hmm, I... Yeah, I'm not sure it's going to go as well as Sticky Toffee, but I'm, I'm prepared to be wrong on that one. We're always looking for new ideas. Um, 
And then Andy, loving the Quiet Storm series, wish you'd started saving them. We do have a few. So it's something, again, the tap room online, we try and sort of hold enough that you can order the last few at least to be able to try them alongside. Um, put in, you know, you can order them together in boxes and things as well like that. So if you get yeah, on the that, sorry, yeah. So I was, was going to say on that note, James, yeah, we've, mm -hmm. um, we always see the stock board in terms of how much we've got left of that stock in the tap room. And we tend to try and order enough of it to carry us through. So at the moment, we've still got the Banoffee, the Rocky Road, um, the Sticky Toffee. Um, we've still got all those available at the moment for people to come down and grab. Yeah. So, yeah, it's good. You can, it's something we know people like to do. And especially also with the quiet storms when you've got the color scheme too. As I say, we're, we're running out of colors uh, before we run out of hops, but it looks great. If you pop in the tap room, you'll see that whole range in the fridge there as well. So, um, yeah, come on down and, and check them out too. So, um, and also, yeah, Pardus, Necessary Evil, they'll be coming in. We've got some exciting barrel aged beers. We've got a couple to be launched uh, later this year. Um, so please keep an eye out for those. They'll be coming. We'll be starting with a very special barrel aged beer in next month's box. Um, and then a couple of months after that as well. So keep your eyes peeled for those if you like those ones. Um, doing the same with the Pardus and Necessary Evil. Uh, any previews? Well, that will be an extra special one that we will have in there for the box as well. I don't want to give too much away on it just yet, um, but we will be doing that one. And then we're going to bring back an old favorite as well um, with actually you'll see one of our big Imperial IPAs. We've done lots of takes in it before, but we're going back to the classic which I've been really missing. I've been wanting a big Imperial IPA, just a nice, bitter, hoppy one. Um, so that's going to come in. And we're going to be collabing uh, with our friends down at Brick, actually, next uh, month as well. So keep your eyes peeled for all of those. Um, those will be the key ones. But definitely, we're going to do a really fun barrel-aged beer. So um, definitely one to look out for. Uh, you had the barrel-aged Bratcher over Christmas as well. Perfect Christmas beer. It just gives you something else. I think it worked really nicely, the barrel aged Braccia, with being able to, you know, that big flavors there. Um, and there's almost like that really well balanced, I suppose, but quite um, in depth kind of. There's a little medicinal, little clove that hits you from the Braccia, but when you put it in those bourbon barrels, I think it just mellows it out so nicely over time. Uh, and actually, one we were tasting today, if anyone's got any kicking around, was the Heart Desires, talking of aging beers. Um, Heart Desires was the six and a half percent. So it was a blonde ale and we did it with gooseberries in as well. And maybe not one you'd think it aged that well, but we had it and it was about four years aged and it was absolutely spectacular. It's a little of the zing had kind of gone, but it had mellowed so nicely. So if any of you are holding any stocks or anything, that's a good time to be drinking that one. I know, is there still some in the shop, Russell? The Heart yeah, Desires? Yeah. yeah, we've got some of that available. So yeah, get yourselves down for that. Yeah, well, I know you, you took some out of the shop today, so it's that it was that one you were drinking, wasn't it? So yeah, that's true. Well, I pinched out of the fridge, so I wasn't sure how much else we had. <laughs> um, but yeah, so there's that one to check out. So always those, and yeah, extra 500 mil options. We are working on the 500 mil line at the moment as well to make sure we can bring you more. So if you're enjoying the 500 mils, more of those will be coming to you know coming out soon as well. So. Keep your eyes peeled for those. Again, all our socials will have lots of info on them. Um, but definitely next month's going to be really fun as well. Like I say, special barrel aged beers, nice collab as well. A real nice, fresh, just zesty collaboration that will be coming up. We'll have some visitors and guests joining us on here as well. Um, and as always, please, you know, just keep talking to us and, um, you know, messaging us on socials or let us know what you'd like, what you don't like. And also keep an eye out for those two Mikanshi modas next month as well. Um, and then, Russell, did you have anything else coming up we should uh, know about? Um, just if you can get yourself over to the Tap Room Instagram page, there's loads of posts on there at the moment to do with uh, everything to do with beer, but everything otherwise as well. So uh, music festival season and music gig seasons upon us. We start next week in the Tap Room and we'll have roughly one a month. Um, and we've got an ACDC tribute act and there's over 400 people already already booked in to see that with tickets so um, there's full listings available there um, and um, I think we've recently announced um, we've got Martin Kemp 
formative uh, Spandu Ballet or EastEnders, whatever your taste is. He's uh, he'll be with us um, in September, and um, I know Tiki's on at the moment as well on the call. But if her phone's anything like mine, it's on fire tonight with just notifications from Instagram with people talking about it. So that that's definitely going to be a popular one. Real. Oh, fantastic. It's great that we're doing these really good names, good events down there as well. We've got the space for it, the beer and, and of course, the food too. So, yeah, really. Yeah, exciting. exactly. And we're conscious that, um, you know, money's tight for everyone at the moment. So we want people to enjoy their money and we want it to go a bit further. So if we can put on a, a good gig, you know, something to really look forward to towards the end of the month or, or whenever it might be with some great beer as well, you know, we can combine everything and have a really, really good night. So uh, we're looking forward to them. Yeah, we've got, um, like I said, we've got those two booked in and we've got everything in between from uh, Blondie and, and all sorts as well. Some more original bands are booked into. Good. And then um, Sam just popping in there. Oh yeah, Wildest Volley. Yeah, really fantastic mile. I love that one, especially at six. I like a good mile, but at six and a half, you know, it was... One you thought, wow, is it going to hold? And the body is beautiful. It drinks so well. So, yeah, good idea. <laughs> 55 weeks time until the end of Jan. But we'll get there finally. Like, hopefully we'll get there. As I say, we've got lots of fun beers coming out in February. Uh, I mentioned a couple. Actually, if we're talking Quiet Storm, it's going to be a really cool English hop. We've been working with, a, again, an English hop farmer. And, and so we'll be putting some in. We'll start with some of those in February, too. So, Again, just a little kind of sneak peek towards what we're looking at. Um, as Charlotte mentioned, you can find us out and about as well. So hopefully see some of you in person there. And otherwise, looking forward to seeing you there. Oh, the, um, probably not the 1946. That was a good while back. We did a, um, uh, th that was like the one off with a recipe, but the we will bring back a few other miles. So you'll see them mainly in cask when we're doing kind of small batches and things like that. Again, just follow our socials for a bit more info on them too. So, um, but yeah, otherwise keep in touch, keep talking to us. We'll see you hopefully in person, but otherwise come back next month and uh, we'll let you know the dates will get sorted out. And um, thank you very much, Charlotte, for looking after us this evening. Thank you, Russell, for taking the time, talking us through the food and beers. Uh, and thanks to Reese, who's uh, popped off, but it was great to have Reese along as well. So cheers to everyone, guys. Thank you. Enjoy your evening. Hopefully February comes very soon and we'll see you all then. So good night. Good night.